Thank you so much for joining us today for this DonorBox webinar. My name is Jenna and I am the nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox and I'll also be the moderator slash cheerleader for the webinar today. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with DonorBox, we provide nonprofits with simple and effective tools to manage their fundraising activities and connect with donors on a deeper level. Today, we have helped 50,000 organizations all around the world raise over $1 billion. So to learn more, you can visit us on our site at donorbox.org. And you can also learn more about our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising solutions uh, with this link that I am about to launch here. So again, today I am so excited to introduce to you uh, Chris Hammond and Brittany Legankey from uh, to talk about the roadmap to success for a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Now, Chris is the CEO and founder of Corporate Giving Connection, and CGC is a full-service development marketing and corporate social responsibility consulting firm that focuses on strategic planning and implementation for nonprofit organizations and corporations. Chris has 12 plus years of event management and nine plus years of nonprofit fundraising, consulting and leadership experience. He holds a BA in political science an MA in public policy and administration from California Lutheran University. Whew, that's all, that's it. <laughs> and Brittany is the Vice President of Project Manage Management for CGC, initially starting her career in program management and later transitioning into development. Brittany has gained valuable insight into common obstacles that organizations face while attempting to secure funding. Brittany leans into her extensive experiences in event and auction management and a proven track record in cultivate, cultivating corporate donors to provide strategic solutions for nonprofit consulting clients. So needless to say, we are in very good hands today. And fun fact, CGC was our very first donor box webinar. So we're really be about 40, 45 minutes long with plenty of time allotted at the end for Q&A. Yes, this webinar is being recorded and you'll receive the recording and all the resources we've shared today via email this week. So keep an eye out for that. All right, without further ado, uh, Chris and Brittany, I'm gonna pass it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us and thank you everybody for attending. We're, we're excited to get started and talk about one of our favorite fundraising methods, which is peer-to-peer. -peer. I know everybody's looking for some uh, great online fundraising methods, especially the past couple of years. So we've done a lot of work with a lot of different nonprofit clients um, of all different sizes all over the country um, and raised a ton of money online. Um, so we're excited to share some tips and tricks with you today that we've picked up along the way. And we can go to the next slide. Um, so we're going to cover some basics about peer-to-peer, -peer, so what that is, um, some different um, ways that you can really make your, your uh, campaign successful. We'll talk about keeping your, your fundraisers motivated and then some final do's and don'ts towards the end. I'm sorry, my computer's screwing up a little bit here, but I'm going to keep going. So what is peer-to-peer? -peer? So a lot of us have seen peer-to-peer um, -peer probably and interacted with it before, typically through athletic, uh, athletic events like runs, walks, marathons, cycling events, things like that. So you, you might have received an email um, from somebody, a friend or family member asking you to donate to their fundraiser for a specific organization that they cared about. Um, so that's peer-to-peer. -peer. But we've seen it really branch out um, in the past few years and be used for all different types of fundraising. So end of year giving, annual giving campaigns, even galas and other types of events like that. So in this webinar, we're gonna focus a little bit more on the online campaign side of things, but if you are doing an event, an in-person um, activation, all of this information will be applica applicable to both. So if you've never done it peer-to-peer -peer before, we'll give you a, a really good overview of how everything works. And even if you have done it before, I think hopefully you'll pick up a lot of new ideas for your next campaign and, and kind of work out some of the kinks here. 
So crowdfunding versus peer-to-peer, -peer, a few things to note, um, the differences between the two, because they are very related, but there are some slight differences. So crowdfunding is something that you typically see, like maybe on Giving Tuesday. So you're sending everybody to one main campaign landing page and everybody is donating in one spot. Um, peer to peer is a little different because you're enabling fundraisers to serve as ambassadors for you. So they're creating their own campaign landing pages, asking for donations on your behalf. They have their own page with their own personal fundraising goals. So all of the money and all of the donations are still ultimately funneling into that big pot. But everybody's kind of setting up a situation where they're asking for money for themselves, for their personal fundraiser that ultimately goes towards the big group goal. So that's how it's a little different. Crowdfunding typically you can use on a shorter timeline than peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, it's great for like campaigns that are one day, like Giving Tuesday I mentioned, or a week. Peer-to-peer -peer really you need to give yourself a little bit more time because you're relying on other people to get the message out for you. You really need to give them time to send out messages, do follow-ups and things like that. Um, so it just takes a little bit more time. Another great thing about peer-to-peer -peer that separates it from crowdfunding is that with crowdfunding, you're really uh, relying on people that are already in your, your network and already that you already have communication with. Peer-to-peer -peer is great because it's a great way to bring in a whole group of individual uh, donors into your network that you haven't had contact with before. So you're really gaining access to a whole new community of supporters for your organization. So why organizations love peer-to-peer? -peer. So again, you're gaining that, that huge um, exposure to a, an audience that you've never been in front of before. Um, so you have ambassadors that are amplifying the message for you, and it really allows you to give a personal touch to that donation ask. So you have people that are asking their friends, their family members, their colleagues, their colleagues. so you really have, it's, it's a more personal connection to the donors. Um, we actually had a client that had never done um, an end of year campaign before a few years ago, and they chose to do peer to peer so that they could get access to new donors that they didn't have in their network. So what they did was they had board members each set up a personal fundraising page and make asks on their behalf. And they ended up raising about $20,000 on a very first year end of year fundraising campaign. So it really is a great way to bring in new donors to your organization without relying heavily on the people that you already have. Fundraisers also love peer-to-peer, -peer, so it gives them a ton of flexibility. Um, it can be as much or as little effort as they wanna put in. So when we're talking to potential fundraisers, we always say this could be something that takes as little as 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time. Or if you want to put in a ton of effort, make everything really personal, craft your own messaging, you can definitely do that. So some fundraisers are super motivated. They want to use photos, tell stories themselves. But if somebody really is a super busy person and they say, I just want to copy and paste messaging, send it out, make those asks, this is perfect for them as well. So it really can be as personal or as templated as they want. And it, it there is an element of fun. It's it's can be competitive, so you've got different fundraisers competing against each other, especially if you're using teams and everybody's working together. So it really gives people a chance to be competitive, have fun while doing good and raising money for your organization. So this is where we're gonna have our first poll. And I believe that should be launching. Here it is. So have you done a peer-to-peer -peer campaign before? So we want to get a sense of who we've got in the room. Has your organization ran a peer-to-peer -peer campaign in the past? So it looks like majority of people right now have not. So that's good. So hopefully after this webinar is over, you will be ready to launch your first campaign. We'll have answered all of your questions. All right, so majority no. And for those of you who have done it before, like I said, hopefully um, we'll be able to give you some nice tips that your next campaign will be even better than the last one. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about the campaign essentials. So these are all of the different elements that you need to get um, together and prepare ahead of time before launching your campaign. The biggest thing that we always talk about is diversifying the campaign. So the goal is to have as many different touch points as possible that all have one united message because sometimes it can take a little bit of poking to get people to take that action and make the donation. So you wanna have some different ways to activate people. So you can use events. So if the campaign ends with a big event, that's, that's a great way to get people together. We've even utilized smaller events. So during the campaign, leading up to the end, things like happy hours, cocktail parties, restaurant revenue sharing nights, bar nights, things like that. Email is obviously huge. Um, that's one of the, the, the biggest ways that you're going to be communicating with these potential donors. Um, the, the big thing that you want to make sure is what types of marketing emails and fundraising emails is your organization already sending out. So you want to schedule everything ahead of time. Make sure that all of your emails, all of your messaging is cohesive and it works together and it's not competing against that other messaging that you already have going out. Social media is the same idea. So social media is really meant to enhance your, your digital strategy, your email. So you want to make sure that's also cohesive. It enhances what you're doing with email and it's still telling that same beginning, middle and end story through the campaign. It's also a great opportunity if you're lucky enough to be able to have a, a board a member match donations or a corporate match. Um, that email and social media is a great way to do a shout out for them and to give them a little bit of that marketing benefit um, and, and call attention to that donation. Another thing is direct mail. Um, I think a lot of people forget about that nowadays, but we're big, big believers that direct mail still works, especially if you've got um, maybe an older donor population. We've seen it be super successful even in the past couple of years. The only thing that you'll want to consider is when is the best time to send out um, that mailing during the campaign and who's going to be receiving that. It might not be worth your, your time, your energy, and your funds to send it out to everybody that you have addresses for, but maybe if you segment to specific donors, so maybe people that have given $500 or $1,000 or more in the past year, those might be people that are primed to receive a message like that. We actually had a client um, a few years ago who did an annual fall, ap fall appeal through direct mail, and they had each of their board members create their own personal lists of contacts that they wanted to send to, they put together the letter and they allowed those board members to write a personal message that was attached with the letter. So when the, the donor received the letter in the mail, they got the letter from the organization, but then they really had that added personal touch of the board member or the donor saying, this is an organization that means a lot to me and here's why. So looking for ways to let people have those little personal touches is really important. And then just, of course, be mindful of mailing lists. So once somebody does make that donation, don't keep sending them messaging, soliciting um, a donation, because then they might not feel like, you know, that, that the gratitude was there. So other peer-to-peer -peer content. So a catchy theme is super important, something that everybody can rally around and that's really easy to understand. So social media and email activations, you'll need a ton of content to drive that. So images, powerful images that stand out. Attention spans are super low, as we all know, scrolling through emails and on social media. So you want quick videos, eye-catching images that stand out and grab people's attention really quickly. Same with stories, testimonials, and quotes. Start gathering those things ahead of time. Or if you have your programs team gathering those things for you, give them plenty of lead time because it really does take a little bit more time, I think, usually than people expect to compile all of that content. And you will need a ton of content to fill out all of those emails and different things like that. So we have some examples of different um, content that we like, images that we like here. So numbers, statistics really stand out to people powerful images that are colorful that catch your eye. In this other example, we've got a short success story with a, a photo of, of a participant and then kind of that highlighted fun fact that grabs your attention on top of that. And it might be good to try different methods, see what works, do some little 
testing with what is your community reacting to? What are they clicking on? What are they engaging with? See what works for them. Some people love numbers. Some people love stories. Some people love quick bullet points or facts, images, videos. So just kind of see what works out and try out multiple things during the campaign. So when it comes to a campaign theme, so again, this is this is kind of really the, the basis of where you're starting with your campaign. This is going to be the overarching theme that ties everything together. So you want it related to your mission and programs, obviously to your organization, stay within your brand and the storytelling that you already do. You want it to be super easy for people to understand and connect with. One thing that we like to tell our clients is that it really helps when you focus on one specific program or initiative that you're fundraising for. So instead of just saying, we're raising money for the organization broadly, maybe you pick a specific program and saying, say, this is what we're raising money for and here's our goal and here's how we measure it and why. So maybe if your organization needs to build a new gym facility, you say, we're raising money to build this new gym facility. We need $10,000 to cover the cost of new equipment. So that's really easy for everybody to understand and wrap their mind around. They know exactly what the impact of their donation will be and where all of that money is going. And that also allows you to have various levels of giving along with that. So maybe starting at $25, going all the way up to $1,000 or whatever that is, different levels of donations. So you can say $25 donation buys basketballs for our gym or $1,000 buys new uniforms. Whatever that is, it gives you really storytelling to go along with the numbers of what those donations actually mean. So people know exactly where their money is going. Also be sure that when you're picking a theme, to pick, to pick something that can translate into a nice hashtag if you're using social media. Um, and you can put at the top of all your emails on your campaign website and all of your marketing content. So overall, we always just say, keep it short and keep it really specific for your organization. And then in terms of a campaign goal, so picking the next thing after your, um, your theme, I'm sure the first thing a lot of people think about when they think about a campaign is how much money do we want to raise? So you want to create a goal that is attainable and realistic. So you don't want to go too crazy and because it's kind of always a bummer at the end of the campaign when people don't hit their goal. It happens, of course, but we want to be as close as we can to predicting what we can actually hit or exceed. Um, is obviously even better because it feels great to hit that goal and to be able to celebrate with your supporters. So you want to be really realistic about what you can actually achieve with the campaign. So here we have some examples of different questions that we typically ask our clients when they're picking their goal for their campaign. So if you've done a peer-to-peer -peer campaign before, you know, your results from that sometimes will give you a good indication of, of how much you can raise the goal for the next one. Um, if you've ever done any kind of online fundraising or anything like that, end of year campaign, any crowdfunding, if so, how much did that make? Um, what is the impact that you'd like to make from the campaign? So what, what do those numbers really mean? How many fundraisers will you need? So if you have done a campaign before, take a look at the at the data from from that past campaign. You know, what were what was the average donation amount? How much did the average fundraiser bring in? And knowing that, how many fundraisers would you need to hit the goal that you have in mind? Is that realistic? Do you see general donations coming in outside of the fundraisers? So are you going to be sending out messaging from the organization? Is there going to be corporate money, anything like that coming in? Is there a board match? Or are you really relying exclusively on funds that your, that your fundraisers are going to be bringing in? And then again, just do you feel confident that you'll exceed that goal? Because again, at the end, it, it really feels good to celebrate that win with, with people who have been involved from the beginning. And then I'm going to pass over the baton to Chris. He's going to talk about setting up fundraisers for success. Hello, everybody. So it sounds like you've received um, some, some quick institutional knowledge of what uh, a peer-to-peer -peer campaign is all about um, and, and the different types of content that you're going to need in the campaign. But now let's talk about where we're going to find these mythical fundraisers. So I know we hear all too often that organizations feel like, you know what, the people in our network just aren't really good at technology 
or we don't really have people that are deep pocketed donors. Well, I want to let you guys know that you definitely have some, some potential rock star fundraisers in your backyard as we speak. So some of our favorite fundraiser types are individuals that are currently involved with your mission or programs. These are usually the top candidates. They might not be um, big donors, but they know exactly the power of your organization and the great work that your mission is doing. And it makes it very seamless for them to communicate their va your value um, to their actual network. Um, recurring individual donors that have shown consistency. So if somebody's a monthly donor or an annual donor and they've shown a propensity to give um, on a regular basis, they will understand what it takes to put together the beginning, middle, and end of a solid peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Anybody that's been a committee member, um, those are such great fundraisers because of the fact that they've shown a track record of accountability. Um, whether you've had them for an auction committee, an event committee, or a different type of committee, they know that there's going to be a planning, building out a strategy, and then really making sure that they execute at a high level. You know, I, I think one of the misconceptions, like I said a little bit earlier, is that your, your fundraisers have to be an active donor. No, they just need to be willing to volunteer their time. And dependable volunteers are great peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, especially if they have an active network, because they're willing to put in that extra work to make sure that they can get your messaging out to their community. And then any board member who's been consistent in accomplishing their fundraising goals. So one thing that I'll say here is if you have a new fund, uh, board member that is looking to really make an impact and make a splash and really show what they're um, all about, they're a perfect candidate uh, for, for a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Sometimes if you've had a board member that's been around for a while and, and, they haven't, um, and, and they haven't been willing to actually make introductions, but they're more interested in, in uh, writing a check, those are the perfect folks for a match. So I really look at my board members as if they're, if they're young and eager to show what they're all about, have them be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. If not, you can have them be part of a, of a specific matching program that will really help you get the most out of that campaign. And then any individuals that are personally invested in your organization or express interest in getting more involved. I know when I was in development, I would get um, emails all the time saying, I don't have a lot of time, I don't have a lot of money, but I would really love to find a way to help your organization. These are the perfect candidates to, to really see if they can become peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for you. So one of the big things that we think is, is um, one of the biggest challenges that a lot of organizations have is once they bring a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser on, they haven't given them clear expectations. And what ends up happening is the people don't end up doing anything. They're just like, you know what? I feel overwhelmed. I don't really know the exact work that is being asked of me. Um, and they end up shutting down. We think it's really important from the beginning to really go to your, to your fundraisers and let them know what is actually expected of them. If you can build out expectations, it really does build out a recipe for success. So some of our favorite questions to ask, are you open to soliciting funds from your network through email and social? This is a great question because if somebody's saying no, then they probably might not be the right person to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. And it's important for them to know what's expected of them from the beginning. Are you comfortable with fundraising X amount of dollars over X period of time? If not, what are you comfortable with? I think this is a great question because of the fact that, you know, so often organizations will decide that everybody has to fundraise a certain amount. Well, it's important for you to find what do they feel comfortable with. Like Brittany said earlier, we want to make sure that they are exceeding um, their revenue goals. So you want to ask them, is 500 something that you feel comfortable with? Is 250? It, 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 it is not a problem for you to have too low of a fundraising goal for these fundraisers because if they exceed it, they can just continue to add to it. But it also helps them understand there's going to be a number associated with this particular campaign. We will provide you a sample email and social templates. Do you think your network would be willing to contribute? I love this question because of the fact that they know that they don't have to recreate the wheel. They don't need to build out the language themselves. If you already have the, the email and social templates already created for them, that only makes your job that much easier because they can look at it and say, 
oh, I honestly just have to spend 10 minutes a week just filling out the blank and pressing send. I want to be a part of this and I want to help the organization out. Um, letting them know that they can share their personal stories um, and, and images or personal vid videos, but if not, giving them the opportunity to do the templated route. That's important for them to know that, hey, you have a compelling story. We love why you are, are, are involved with our organization. Feel free to share it, or if not, you can just make this templated. And then also getting an idea if they have the opportunity um, to have a company matching. Uh, because like we said, we think board members can do a great job of doing a, a match, but companies can also do a great match as well. Okay, we have another poll question. I personally can't see it, but um, Brittany, can you see it because I'm, I'm sharing? Yep, so our poll is, have you had difficulty recruiting fundraisers in the past? So this is for anybody that has actually had a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign before. So it looks like we're a little over 80% yes, they have had difficulty. And, and, and so to that, I, I, I absolutely think you guys all have the capability to get those fundraisers, but let's try to reshape the narrative of letting them know exactly what you're asking of them. If they know that they don't have um, a very serious um, time commitment and letting them know that it's only going to be 10 minutes a week and you're providing them with the templates, it really makes the, the communicating that that much easier. All right, so let's talk about keeping our fundraisers motivated. So one of the biggest things that I think is going to be important is making sure that you're creating very clear templates. So we love templates at CGC. We don't want anybody to feel that this is all on them and that they have to create the messaging themselves. We are taking the time to make their jobs easier for them. So we first believe that it's important to put together um, a nice suite of email templates. So we like to do one that introduces the campaign, one that uh, reminds people of the campaign and one that creates urgency at the end. Um, and, then, and then we also think that the organization be, should be having the same type of cadence that is happening on a parallel track so that people are hearing from you um, from a multitude of different ways. This is an example of a uh, follow-up email. So this would be like the second email. So as you can see here, we're still once again having a quick email and making sure that we're letting people know this is for a specific organization. This is when the campaign ends, um, letting them know why this is important to you um, and really just inspiring them to act now, letting them know how they can donate now. This is all ideal because look at this. You, this is about six sentences. This makes it really easy for somebody to know what this is about, not having to scroll. And this also makes it really easy for the fundraiser, as you can see, they only have to fill in about three blanks, put this into their email, and they can send this out. We believe that you need to have short email templates, not only for the people that are receiving them, but also this is really important for your fundraisers to not feel like they are overwhelmed with the amount of messaging that you're providing to them. We also think it's great to create social media templates. So here's a few different social media um, images that we've created for clients. One is for um, a literacy organization based in New York, one is for the Center for Food Action um, in, in New Jersey, um, and then one is from a, an organization based in Los Angeles, Decade of Dizzy, and another one is YSA based in, in, in Washington, D.C. But as you can see here, we're using a lot of the same principles that we were using for those emails, but making it in a much more condensed form. So as you can see here, this was for a specific campaign that we did for the um, dancing organization, Dizzy Feed. And we wanted people to uh, have a fundraising goal of $1,000. And all we did was two sentences where the fundraiser really was just able to copy and paste. Help me hit my fundraising goal of $1,000 for an organization that's close to my heart. Donate now to the Decade of Dance campaign to support the next generation of dance enthusiasts. And you put the link on. That takes one minute to do. But that could make all the difference in raising over $1,000, right? Um, for this particular organization, we did this peer-to-peer -peer campaign, and granted, they did have celebrities that were helping as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. They ended up raising over $200,000 
um, in, a, in a campaign that they had never done before. So it really does make all the difference in the world to just make this easy copy and paste. Um, but as you can see, we, we use that same cadence of one that introduces the campaign, one that um, reminds them, and one that creates urgency. This is one of those that was um, a reminder as well. So one of, my, one of my main things that I think is so important is making sure that you're communicating with your fundraisers, but also letting them know how much you appreciate their work. At the end of the day, these folks are volunteers. Fundraising, I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same way, can be a, it, it could be a lonely world, right? You're out here slaying dragons on your own. So anytime that you can um, let these fundraisers know that you appreciate what they're doing and providing them positive reinforcement, it really goes a long way. By creating templates, whether they're the email templates, the social templates, um, you're being mindful of their time. If you're creating those expectations, and having all of these templates already created before they, they've even started, they know exactly what's expected of them and they're not having to waste time trying to create language and create extra work for themselves. Set realistic goals that they are confident they can achieve. If you've already talked with them about their goals and they agreed upon it, 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 it pays dividends because for the folks that um, did not have any say, it really is something that they're fighting an uphill battle. They're like, I guess I'm gonna raise $1,000 because this organization told me to, but I didn't agree to it. Make sure that they're agreeing upon it. This is a team. You want them to know um, how important the campaign is and that the impact that they'll be making in the community. So anytime that you can, reinforce the mission by having those mission moments um, because you know sometimes they're gonna forget why they got involved in the first place. So anytime that they can um, see the mission in front of them, that's only just going to reinforce why they got involved in the first place. Provide coaching and guidance when requested. Please don't micromanage. These guys, this is not their job. So you want to make sure that you're making them feel special. You're providing them coaching and guidance when requested and not taking the time to just micromanage them for no apparent reason. So here's some quick case studies. So this was an organization that I briefly talked about a little bit earlier, the Center for Food Action. They would typically have an event that would take place every 9-11 where they would pack over 10,000 snack packs um, for, the, um, for the homeless community in New Jersey. And you know, when, when the pandemic initially broke out, they were having um, some difficulty and they knew that they would no longer be able to do the, the, the event in person. So they reached out to us and they said, hey, we would love to do this. We wanna do a virtual campaign. So we reached out to them and said, hey, what would be a goal for success? And they said, you know, we've raised 25 to 30,000 in the past. Um, that would be great. Uh, so what we ended up doing is they only, we, we ended up getting about 10 to 12 fundraisers for them. Um, and one woman in particular really took them to the next level uh, because she had typically been somebody that had given them a $2,500 sponsorship but rather than her giving the $2,500 sponsorship this year, we asked her to send out three emails. That $2,500 donor turned into a $15,000 donor based off of the funds that she was able to raise from her network. So you never know who could be a rock star fundraiser for you. You just have to give them the tools that they need to be successful. Um, another, another example of a, of a different organization that we worked with was the US Japan Council. They were really unique in the sense that the organization really wasn't involved in this particular campaign. This was fully driven by their young professionals group um, that uh, created customized email templates um, and sent this out to their network. They had 40 plus fundraisers. They all had small goals. I mean, they were anywhere from uh, $250 to $1,000 for each fundraiser was their goal. Um, but because of the fact that they had so many different fundraisers, they were able to exceed their $25,000 goal and bring in 240 plus new individual donors. Just because in that, that, that age old cliche, many hands make light work, really made it something that was really easy for them to get in front of um, people that they would have never been able to get in front of to begin with. Um, so let's have a quick review. So some of the common peer-to-peer -peer mistakes is lack of adequate planning. We hear all too often that people start building their templates out once the campaign has already begun. They're building out their messaging. Um, far too late 
and the fundraisers feel like this is just a haphazard operation and they don't have the tools that they need to be successful. Really take the time to be a month or two out building out a very clear campaign framework and build out the content and all the messaging. There's no unified messaging or branding across any of the platforms. That is so important. Make sure that once, once you take some of the lessons that Brittany talked about, building a campaign theme, building some of the content out, you wanna make sure that that is um, consistent on all platforms and making sure that the messaging is not only consistent from the organization, but from the fundraisers. Hey, templates people, make sure you provide those sufficient tools for fundraisers, give them the resources, give them the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising kit that they need. And then also making sure that you're communicating with your fundraisers, whether you're communicating how proud of them you are or uh, making sure that they have the coaching and guidance that is needed whenever they need it. That is it for me. Do you guys have any questions? Hey guys, um, what a great session. The whole time I'm going, yes, yes. Um, really, really good. Before we hop into Q&A, we do have a few questions. Um, so I'm gonna chat at you guys as our attendees are loading some more questions in. Guys, ask your questions about peer-to-peer. -peer. I know you have them. Um, so before we hop in, first of all, I wanna thank you both for these really great insights. And um, hang on. We're going to put our welcome screen back on. There we go, that looks pretty. Um, for your really great insights there. I especially um, like your points um, about making sure that your fundraisers are prepared. You know, these are people who have may have never fundraised before in their life. Um, and as fundraisers ourselves, we know how much work it takes to learn how to make the ask, right? So making sure that your fundraisers are prepared um, really goes a long way. So I really want to thank you for that. Um, and then I also want to encourage folks, if you would like a free marketing and fundraising consultation with Chris, I'm going to go ahead and launch this link now. You can go ahead and sign up using that link um, to um, chat with the best of the best and um, see how you can get your peer-to-peer -peer campaign running. So I'm seeing some clicks happening there. Excellent. And um, my sharing was not working during the presentation, so I also want to share, let's see if it will work now, um, some of our very own peer-to-peer -peer email templates. So um, the marketing team worked on some email templates to get you going um, where you can kind of get some inspiration from these. So if you're new to this and um, don't have the capacity for um, consultation, this is a great place to start. And now I do see we have some questions here. Um, actually, one more plug before we hop in. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Um, we have a webinar coming up next Wednesday, April 27th at 2 p.m. to talk about how you can bring in money quickly and continuously for your nonprofit using text to give. So yet another avenue where you're meeting your fundraisers where they are. Peer-to-peer -peer is a great avenue. I love this option. And then also text to give because we all have our phones in our hands at all times, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click, uh, launch the link to that webinar. Go ahead and sign up so that you don't miss it. Bear with me here. Here we are. All right, Chris and Brittany, are you ready for some Q&A? Yes, yes. Let's do it. Awesome. So I'll hop over here and I'll read some questions up off for you. Um, so this one's from Sharon. It says, sounds like you may need two campaigns, one to your constituents to empower them and the second focused on the fundraising project. Are these slides geared more towards the first part? And Sharon, we may need you to elaborate a little more on that. But um, Chris and Brittany, do you want to Try to tackle that yeah, one. I think maybe um, Sharon, I'm, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking about, but I think creating messaging in order to ask people to service fundraisers and prepare them to service fundraisers is kind of the first part. And then creating the messaging for, for those fundraisers to then go ahead and send out and asking for donations um, on behalf of the organi organization is kind of the second part. So I guess you could consider it kind of two two um, types of asks. So asking people to be fundraisers and then asking people to donate. 
Thank you for that, Sharon. Please let us know if that um, captured what you were looking for. Happy to dive a little bit more into that. And then um, from Colin, do you have any swipe files of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns um, that can help inspire others? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we just have, we have plenty of case studies of different campaigns that we've done. And then we also just have um, their actual campaign landing pages so you can get an idea of what that's all about um, and the collateral that we developed around them. So Excellent. I, I, I encourage everyone to really sign up for a, um, for that consultation and we'll, we'll be able to share those with you and we'd be happy um, to help however you would like. Excellent. Thank you so much. So there you are, Colin. I just relaunched that link. Um, so go ahead and click that to um, learn more. All right. Um, this is a great question, and this is from Felicity. Have you seen peer-to-peer -peer work for those who are still waiting on their 501c3 status? Yeah, I mean, so one of the biggest things that we would say is I would definitely say to not do peer-to-peer -peer until you are fully a 501c3. Um, it can get a little difficult um, to communicate your value proposition to others when you're not officially a 501c3. And I think it can be difficult for people to understand. I would, I would definitely just say, wait till you're ready. We, we oftentimes say, um, we, you don't wanna do a peer-to-peer -peer campaign if you're not a 501c3, but also if you don't have enough fundraisers in place to actually execute said campaign. So I, I say don't rush it. Wait till everything, all your, all your ducks are in a row before you um, plan to actually do that campaign. Thank you for that. And uh, rapid fire over here, you guys. I'm just throwing them at you. Uh, so um, thank you for answering these so gracefully. Um, another one from Amelia. Do you, ha uh, do you recommend creating a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser campaign with individuals who are part of a missionary group? Um, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's anybody that knows your mission, that knows your, knows your organization and knows the work that you're doing are a great fit to be a peer to peer fundraiser for you. So I, 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 I think, I think the biggest thing that I would definitely say is it's important to have people that are involved with your organization to serve as fundraisers. They're the only ones that are truly going to be able to communicate all the great work that you're doing. Thank you for that. And um, I think we already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to go ahead and launch it anyways. Does CGC help with writing and designing content for the peer-to-peer -peer campaign? That is our bread and butter. That's what we do best, right? So we'll do the designing, we'll do the writing, we'll do the templates, the messaging. We'll, we'll even do, uh, Brittany is the queen of how-to videos. So she'll teach you how to do a how-to video of building out a fundraising page, but also, do a how-to video on how to use the, the templates and resources that we provided them. Wonderful, thank you. And again, that uh, link is down there in the bottom left for a free marketing and fundraising consultation. So go ahead and sign up if you wanna learn more about the services that Chris and Brittany offer through CGC. And let's see here. Um, This one's an interesting one from Aiden. Do donors who, uh, uh, oh, oh, I lost it here. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Okay, do donors um, care about C3 status, getting a donation receipt when giving um, 250 or less? I'd say, yeah, I, yeah, I would say yeah. when you're doing a campaign like this, people who make a donation to a nonprofit are gonna expect a receipt that they can claim with their taxes. So I would say it's it's important to provide that no matter the amount, no matter the level. Um, I think if you don't, you're gonna get a ton of questions about it um, and that you could have an uncomfortable conversation there if you're not able to provide that, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Those donations receipt, donation receipts should be instant, right? Um, so make sure you have a platform that are sending those receipts instantly. And then at tax season, you're not bombarded um, with many emails. Who else has been there? So have you seen that meme where it's like, um, 
brace yourselves, tax season is coming. Um, make sure you're covering your bases throughout the year with those tax receipts um, and those donation receipts um, so that you can honor the people who have contributed and make their giving as um, seamless and as easy as possible. Let's see. Um, oh, I like this question from Daniel. Can you be more specific with training your volunteers to fundraise? Um, I put together a peer-to-peer -peer packet with templates last year to those who signed up to help, and we crushed our year-end fundraising goal. Yes, Daniel. Um, although we had a strong social media presence, um, we didn't do individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, so not sure if that would help. In any case, what would you suggest for training volunteers, especially in mass? We've had about 30 people. Yeah, so we, we do a couple different things. I think the number one biggest thing, like we talked about, is making sure that those templates are really self-explanatory. Even if you're sending over copy and paste email templates and social media templates, give a, kind of give a little short intro and directions of how things are supposed to be used on the top of that page. Because people sometimes are coming in and maybe haven't paid attention to your the last few emails you sent and things like that. Another thing that we like to do is host a fundraising kickoff call. So anybody who's interested in becoming a fundraiser who has or who has already signed up, give them an opportunity to join a call where they can get a quick how to rundown of how everything works, answer any questions that they have. Um, you can record that call and send it out afterwards. So if people aren't able to join, they can take a look at that. And then when in doubt, like Chris said, we love creating quick little how-to videos. So record your screen and explain how to sign up and create your own page or explain how to use the, the email templates and things like that. Those are always really nice. And then just making yourself available for questions always. Awesome. You, you tackled that beautifully. That is a loaded question with a lot of moving parts there. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Daniel. I hope that um, answered it for you. Now, guys, I actually do see a few questions about DonorBox peer-to-peer, -peer, so I'm going to take a moment to answer those all in one lump sum there. Uh, so yes, DonorBox does offer peer-to-peer. -peer. This is free with your DonorBox account. You have the same processing fee, the 1.95% processing fee for the mother campaign and 2.95% processing fee for the child campaign, so the fundraisers. Um, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the link right here so that you can learn more about DonorBox's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And you can put the power of fundraising in the hands of your supporters. So go ahead and check that out to learn more about how our peer-to-peer -peer can work for you. And let's see here. We have a few more, bear with me as I'm sorting through, make sure that I am not missing any. Okay, um, this one's from Michael. Would you suggest peer-to-peer -peer for ticket sales to an in-person event? Um, I, you, can, you can, depending on the software that you're using, you can sell tickets in addition to having peer-to-peer. I would say they're typically a little bit separate. Um, so you might have an event coming up, you know, maybe you have a walk or run or something like that and, and people register. If you're having them register as fundraisers, you can have them sign up to register for the event and become a fundraiser at the same time. Um, but those are going to be two like slightly separate activations. Yep. And, and just to add to that, we, we oftentimes think that a, a, a great idea can be um, if you're doing like an event where there's tables, you can have like, and there's like maybe company tables, they can fundraise against each other and then they can add that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising element, but it just won't be something that you're fundraising off of tickets. You're, you're doing this more. These groups of people are, are, are serving as teams that are fundraising. Yep, absolutely. Great suggestion there. And I think one of the coolest parts about peer-to-peer -peer is that you can add in that gamification element um, and it's really fun to see your supporters um, keep track of each other and how they're supporting you and kind of uh, want to, I guess, one-up each other in a way. Um, I've seen a lot of boards who've gotten really into this, especially around fundraising events um, and the challenge was get your table to raise the most money, right? Um, and uh, they did this all the way up to their event day, which was pretty cool. Um, so, um, I, I like your uh, suggestion there. Um, 
Let's see. This one's from Terry. We have a swimming event with 72 teams. Can I have 72 different personalized donation pages? Well, Terry, through DonorBox, you can have your one, well, you can have as many peer to peer campaigns as you would like. Uh, but for example, if you are fundraising for one specific campaign, you will have your peer to peer campaign page. And then you can have as many child campaigns or fundraisers campaigns that branch off of that. Um, so if you have any specific questions about that, um, you can toggle on peer to peer for any of your donor box campaigns. Um, recommend if you're new to peer to peer, starting with one um, and seeing how it goes and um, inviting your uh, inviting your sw uh, your swimmers or your teams um, to fundraise for you within that one campaign. I hope that answered your question. Um, let's see. I like this question from Daniel. Uh, do you have video template appeals? They do a lot of Instagram reels and they're about to expand to TikTok too. So any templates or suggestions for videos like a script or music graphics or um, a good place to um, put those donate buttons or stickers or links? Yeah, I mean, we could definitely, I, I, I think this would definitely be something that I, I think it would make more sense to have a more um, in-depth conversation about it. But for us, like we said about the actual email templates, keeping it short, sweet, and having a very clear call to action of what you're actually asking them to do is going to make all the difference in the world and making it really easy for them to get to the fundraising page. So if, if you need help with that, we do video, we do graphic design as well. So we'd be happy to support. Cool. Thank you. All right. I think we have time for Two more, uh, so one more from Allison. Is it appropriate or would you recommend to offer prizes to those who raise the most funds? Yeah, absolutely, we do that all the time. I think it's a great way to incentivize people to to raise money and, and something that we see a lot is sometimes there will be a clear standout fundraiser or couple of fundraisers that are just like above and beyond what everybody else is doing. And so if you wanna keep everybody motivated and not just give all the same people the prizes over and over i think something that we do um is to be a little bit more creative with those prizes number of donations um you know give give somebody a prize who sends the most number of emails posts on social media the highest number of times gets the most um number of unique donations um we'll do prizes like uh, enter a raffle so anybody who raises at least 100 dollars gets entered in to win a prize through a raffle so kind of everybody has a shot and it incentivizes everybody not just the person who can bring in the most you know kind of the highest number of dollars i also love using prizes at the beginning of um campaigns to get people to actually register and send out emails so if you're saying you know we're run, we're, we're going to give a prize at the end of the first week of the campaign anybody who signs up and raises at least 50 dollars by the first by the end of the first week gets entered to win this. I like getting the campaigns off to like a running start doing things like that. I love that. Thank you so much. And that was a great question. And okay, we've got one more from Glenn. We want to try to raise money for a new recovery center for our organization. How realistic would it be to shoot for a fundraising goal of 150K? yeah we're 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 big believers in really starting small right um if you don't have it, it needs to make specific mathematical sense and so one of the biggest things that we look at that is okay how many how many fundraisers are you going to have if you're going to have 100 fundraisers and each person is potentially having to raise uh, you know 1500 each okay that seems real realistic but if you have 10 fundraisers um, making a $150,000 fundraiser could be a little difficult. So it really is going through the process of trying to understand what is feasible um, and, and also making sure, and I think Brittany talked about it a little bit on, on developing a campaign goal, is really looking at, have we done something of, that, of this nature before? How much did it raise in the past? Um, and does this seem like natural growth for it? But if it seems like you've only done campaigns or events that have raised $20,000, jumping to 150 seems like that might be a little much perfect 
And again, uh, if you've got any questions on setting goals for your peer-to-peer, -peer, getting your peer-to-peer -peer set up, again, go ahead and click that link in the bottom there to sign up for a consultation with Chris and Brittany, and they'll help guide you and set some really realistic and obtainable um, goals for your fundraiser. Well, guys, um, I know we have some more questions coming in. We are at time. However, uh, keep an eye out for the post-webinar emailer. Any questions that we could not get to today, please feel free to email back um, or reply back to that email, and we'll be sure that we answer them. We will also be including the recording, all the resources that we've shared, the link to get in touch with Chris and Brittany um, so that you are well-equipped for your peer-to-peer -peer going forward. Um, and Chris and Brittany, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your expertise. Um, always learning from you guys and know we can always rely on you. So thank you, thank you for this great presentation. And um, everyone, on behalf of all of us here, I want to say thank you for all that you do to serve others. We are so proud to uh, provide the tools and resources you need to help you help others. So thanks so thank much. You. Thank you.